Hello, this is Detlef Schlich and you listen to Attitudes. Today I dive together into the unexpected, exciting ocean of the creative mind with uh, Dory Abelman. Hi, Dory. Hi, Detlef. Thanks so much for having me on the show. It's so great. nice to be back. It's great. It was, it was a great first part. I mean, I found it so interesting. And time flies already by. Dor Dory is um is a bio in infor informatiker. And um yeah, so you um he's gonna doing his, his master now in, in bioinformatic and uh you you used to be as well in Europe, for instance. Yeah, so I lived in France uh for about six months from January to june last year i was doing last, some research last there last year all right um that was that part of your master research or no that was part of my bachelor's research actually um the last year of your bachelor can be for research here the fourth year because we have four years yeah um and i chose to do a uh, part of that in france so i went and i worked uh to do my research there All right. So so Dory is from from uh actually Toronto. Toro are you born in Toronto? Um I've been living in Toronto. Yeah. I I was born in actually in Tel Aviv in Israel. All right. Um, but I moved to Toronto as a young child as a while I was still a baby. All mm -hmm. right. So do you do you still have relatives in 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 Israel probably? Yes, no. I have some relatives, yeah. All right. Do, are you gonna going to Israel sometimes as well? Um, maybe to visit sometime. I'm All not right. sure. Um, so, because of the virus now, but uh, yeah. ab absolutely. So you love to travel in general? Um, yeah, I'd say I like traveling. Yeah, I, I love mm -hmm. to do that, isn't it? I mean, I haven't been away here for for years. Um, I have to admit, I don't know why. I mean, I probably. Lack of money and I don't know. Yeah. It's so great here, so that that I that I um it's like a magnet, West Cork, you see. So that's um but however, um yeah, so you you did your research for half year in France at the university. What did you research? What was your research? I was learning about um cells and uh, breast cancer cells and mm -hmm. how they respond to different uh, treatments, different things, what makes them grow a lot and what makes them stop growing, essentially. All right. Okay. So uh, did you do that in probably in a group with, with other people or? Yeah. Yeah. I was part of a team. How many? Um, there were about 20 people, I would say, in the lab. And then... I had my own role and my own experiments to do. And each person kind of supports the other person's experiment. Like each person does a piece of the puzzle. All right. So so that means you, you got your own your own lab or you probably you shared with other people. Yeah, I shared with other people. I mean I had my own desk, but all the, the actual lab space was and the equipment was shared. So w this was still a part of, of, of the, the, the bachelor degree? Yeah, yeah, the fourth year of the bachelor degree. So mm. that mean that means that meant you you finished your bachelor in 2019? Or? Yeah, that's right. And I started my master's um in September 2019. All right, so you finished in July and and you started in September. Mhm. Mm At the same university? No, a different university. Where where is this where is this in, in Toronto or Yeah, the first university um, was called Western University, and it was yeah. in London, Ontario, which is like a, a smaller town, a few yeah. hours away from Toronto. Mm -hmm. And um, now to do my master's, I'm in the University of Toronto, the main All university. Right. So, but I mean, it was probably as well a little bit tricky to continue with everything, wasn't it? I mean, are you entitled? Uh, uh, Are you allowed to go over there to 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 the labs in order to research if you want? Yeah, um, with the virus, I'm a, we're allowed to. I mean, at the beginning it was closed, but it's reopened now. 
but yeah. it's kind of like uh, go if you need to. So if you can do something from home, better you do it from home. If you actually need to use the equipment, then you can go in to use the equipment kind of thing. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Okay, back to France. So, so you, so you used to be in France for half a year. How was your experience over there? It was really interesting um, because the culture was so different to um, Toronto and what I'm used to. I lived in a small town, not small, I mean, medium size, but small compared to Toronto town uh, called Tours, Tours right. which is in the middle of Paris and Bordeaux. Okay. Um, and it's about two and a half hours away from Paris if you take the slow train or an hour on the fast train. But All it's right. in the Loire Valley region. Um, too. So if anyone's familiar with the Loire Valley, um, they have a lot of castles there, which is the, some of the pictures I sent to you. Yeah, I was wondering if, if these castles uh, were, were, were castles or if, if they were uh, a part of your, um, of your uh, university. No, so the university didn't have any castles, but they took us on trips, uh, the student group there. Uh, took us on some trips to castles on the weekends so that we could enjoy the region a bit. For half a year, amazing. So, what do you think about the French wine? Oh, um, yeah, it was it was it's nice. It's we get a lot of French wine in Canada too, but it's way less expensive in France. Is um, it? Yeah. Double here we pay very. Like here, we pay triple what you'd pay for like triple? the same. No, no way. Well, we have very high taxes here on alcohol. We, we here in Ireland too. They started in the, in the ages to to uh, to um, put close the holes with with um, they, they increased wine tax and and uh, nicotine tax really very high. So it's probably the same in Canada, isn't it? Yeah, very high nicotine taxes too to discourage smoking. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you enjoyed the time in France, and you, you went to a lot of lot of museums as well. Yeah, yeah, I really like museums. I went to a lot of art museums, um, sculpture, um, museums, and history museums too. All right. So you 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 went as well to uh, to Paris probably, and and. Yeah, so I did go to Paris a couple times. Um, And yeah, I love Paris. I really like the architecture in Paris. I thought the city was very beautiful, and I love the museums. Um, there's there's so many of them uh, in Paris. That was lots I mean, of fun to explore. Yeah, Paris. Paris is amazing, isn't it? I mean, uh, it's all all this this Art Deco stuff, you know, over there. It's really it 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 beams you completely into a different universe. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I don't, I don't know how, 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 how about the, uh, the, um, the old town of of Toronto. What do you mean, the like historic districts in yeah. Toronto? So, yeah, we have some, but we don't like not really. I mean, Toronto was only founded like relatively recently. Canada's only a hundred and fifty years old. Yeah. So by the time like all the roads were built in Paris, um. Yeah. There wasn't really anything still in Toronto. Most of it's new and modern. We do have we do have a little bit of historic, but not like in Europe, not like you'd see in France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I saw the panorama of, of 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 Toronto. It's amazing. I mean, the opera is really it's it's a massive thing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, have you been in to the opera house? Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. I've been to the symphonic orchestra though. Uh, which is nice. But I remember Tours had an opera house in, in, in a North American city. You yeah. wouldn't have an opera house usually unless it's a big city with like at least a million people. But what I noticed was in Europe is you have lots of much smaller towns with like 80,000 people and they'll still have an opera house. And I was like, wow, I really like that. Lots more, lots of art and culture here. Yeah, I mean, we, we got here in, in Bali de Hop just a community hall. <laughs> Ah. space for i mean which is great though space for maybe 200 people and uh i think most of the money came really from 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 fundraising and things like that you know so it's it's quite interesting how they how people cope over here in very small spaces small, small communities you know so uh yeah yeah that's great so 
in France, you you saw as well. You 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 sent me an, an image of uh, of Rodin. Yeah, the the thinking man sculpture, the pensée. Think where 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 did you see him? I mean, they they casted I think more than twenty different uh, uh, figures of this thinker. So so where where was this? I saw it in the Rodin Museum in Paris. Um, All right. The Musée Rodin. Yeah. And um, it's basically, I think it was the sculpture's house, actually, for part of it. And then they converted it into, like, actually, I'm not sure if it was their house. But they converted it to, like, a lot of the the, the sculptures and the drawings um, that Rodin made. And then in the courtyard, they had, like, a sculpture garden. And that's where I saw this this sculpture. Yeah. Yeah. It was actually, it's quite interesting because because uh, the thinker was actually made inspired by um, by Dante's uh, uh, Divine Comedy. Oh wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, and and um, he he was the fellow who was sitting um, in front of the gate of hell, you know. I mean, Google it if you see one r like this, sitting and and staring, you know, so that nobody gets in probably. And uh, I mean, there's there there's a huge critique that they say. So I mean, it was Dante didn't he, he was not naked, you know. So um, so critics they say that that's that's this this figure from Rodin is not really. Um, not so original because because he was dressed, but the uh, the um, the uh, intention of Rodin was actually to um, combine uh, intellectual, or the intellect and and poets. So we're gonna come back as well now to science and art, what we already discovered in the first chapter, you know. So, uh, so uh, and in order to to combine to illustrate uh, the the intellectual mind and um, the poetic mind, he decided then to to undress him, you know, and to to form this naked person, you know, the naked thinker, you know. So mm -hmm. so so they so they use him often already as as expression for for philosophy, isn't it? So uh, the way how how he is sitting, uh, yeah. I mean, um, sometimes I must have to admit it reminds me as well from it uh, <laughs> uh, as when when I'm sitting on toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you think like this? Think? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm thinking, ah, oh, so what's going on? So what's what? How can I how can I cope with reality? And uh <laughs> funny. So it's it's really a, a a great figure, and I mean he did he did I mean it's it's, it's bronze. He did a lot of, lot of different models. I mean I think bronze, uh, plaster, and 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 I mean sculptures. They are for me amazing. They are hard worker, hard worker. Mm -hmm. I mean I mean I have friends. They are sculptors, and they do such a such a great job. I don't know how they overview all the all the huge. Uh, organization which is involved in order to create a sculpture you know? yeah yeah how do they plan it ah oh god uh, yeah yeah so so but you see so every artist has has different things and uh i mean i'm i'm drifting more and more into this this uh, my digital shame and art uh i must say i have to i have to do a little bit more physical work drawing like 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 you do and um i will show the images as well on Super. youtube yeah yeah uh, and painting as well i mean i have a couple of paintings still around here and i di i didn't finish them because these projects they are still ongoing you know and as long as you don't have a gallery um it doesn't make sense somehow to finish them um, for me you know because I I rather work on on projects um like 
like the podcast or I started actually with like you with, with, with Instagram promotion and then and which is as well for me very artistically, isn't it? I mean, yeah. So. Thinking so. about what you're going to put, like we make, I make a lot of videos uh, that go on ours and they actually are, it's very time consuming to, to do that too. It, it, it is, it is great. I mean, we, we will, we will come to that in the, in the third part more about that. It is really, it is a new way to communicate as well in art and as well probably in art and science. So yeah, somehow, somehow. yeah, yeah. So that that was France. I mean, um, is there anything what you what you want to add to to your experience in France? I could just say um, another big difference that I noticed between France and in, in North America is here many people live in houses that are far from the city, like an yeah. hour drive away and you live in a, in a house and it's yeah. like the, the suburb. But what mm. I noticed was at least in Tours and in some other European cities was it's very common to live in an apartment building there, which is not, I mean, we still have apartment buildings here, yeah. but they're not as common. And also the other thing is because of this, this whole suburb concept, we don't have a lot of like public transportation, the same as they had in France, like a light rail, for example. Mm. Um, like here you'd only have a light rail in a city with like at least a million people but in Europe you can find it in cities with like a hundred thousand or oh, less yes. because of the density because I, I find in Europe it's a lot more like four, five, six floor buildings and yeah. here at least it's a lot of just houses and the, the last thing I, was also like the roads so by the time many of the buildings were already built yeah. um in Europe, the, the car was invented after. So they couldn't just move all the buildings uh, to make space for the car, which is True. why you have a lot of walkways, I find. But here, the, the buildings came after the invention of the car. So everything is like wide roads. There's a wide road here for anywhere you need to go, which in, in a sense makes the city a little bit less walkable, um, but different. Have you, been, have you ever been in, 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 in Amsterdam or, or in Holland? In the Netherlands. No, I haven't. But I'd love to go into. I heard they have a lot of bike lanes. Yeah, I mean it's great. It's. Uh, I mean, I'm, I must say, and and they have a, a lot, lot of little little streams, you know, in the middle, like like Venice somehow, you know. Have you ever been to Venice? No, I've never been to Italy. I'd like uh, to go in there. Ah, uh, it's 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 that's that's amazing. I mean, that's that's really that's really amazing. And but you're right. It's, it's this this apartment thing. I mean, for instance, for me, it, it's new here in Ireland as well because. If you rent a house or a room, you already have all the furnitures in. And um, that's pro probably the same like in Canada, isn't it? It depends, yeah. I mean, you could get with or without furniture. Yeah, but 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 most of them I, mean, I don't know. So I mean, here here is really it's very common. Yeah, I would say it, it depends, but at least for me, most of the times I've rented there was furniture already. So, but but you you are living not in Toronto. You're living uh, an hour apart. You say, no? yeah, yeah. That's actually very common. People will live like an hour away from the city in a house and just drive in every day. Um, so how need to work. so how how are you gonna get to Toronto if if you don't have a, a railway station close to you or? Well, I'm fortunate actually that I do. There is a railway station. There is an above ground train. Um, All right. Next to it, near where I live. Um, but. Compared to Europe, a lot less of the city has access to rail infrastructure, to public transit infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, I must, I must say, what I know, at least from Germany, they, they are quite organized uh, uh, regarding the infrastructure. Must say, though, here in Ireland, infrastructure-wise, the problem is you've got a lot of rural areas, what means... Uh, it's not very well supported by th by th by the government because it costs as well a lot of money to maintain things like that, you know. So no. yeah. So we have here buses. They're they're going three times a day, you know. I mean, if I I, I live two kilometers apart from the main road, and uh, I can't get a bus in the morning from here, I have to wa still walk ten minutes. Uh, and I, and I get back in the afternoon, and otherwise I I have to get a bus on the main road somehow. You know, it is different uh. world. And the end of the world. We're really here at the end of the world. But uh, 
I know it and I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, the song. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know. Another thing, though, is we have very, very high buildings here. Um, like 60 floors, 70, 80 floor buildings. So that's another very common, common site in North America. Yeah. All right. 60. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, I must say, though, they started that in Germany, in Cologne, in the 80s, you know, and they call it um, Neue Heimat. So it's new, new, new habitat, you know, uh, new, uh, my habitat where where I'm living, you know. So and that was the biggest mistake what they could do because they started to create ghettos, you know. So, uh, so it was uh, uh, they started really to go on the street, you know, and said, no, please don't do that again, you know. So, 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 so we still we try to keep our buildings not as high. I mean, not like that, you know. So, and. Uh, And here, yeah, I mean, yeah, you find a few skys skyscraper in, in in Cork, but it's not it's not too bad, I would say, though. Yeah, but I mean, like I say, the panorama of Toronto is massive. It is, uh, yeah, huge, huge, huge. Wow, that's great, Dory. I mean, I w we are almost at the end of the second part, which I mean, we we had a little pre-discussion and, and we thought we could we could include as well some journey of india and so on but uh yeah i mean 20 minutes france and time flies by that's the way isn't it yeah i can just mention briefly um i spent a few weeks in india studying uh, sociology like uh, history and culture of south asia and um you can put the pictures on the youtube very very interesting place like architecture culture food um yeah different like france and toronto were different um france, like india is like a whole other um like level of different which was really interesting to learn from yeah i think i think we we might maybe include that a little bit in the third part because this relies actually to your podcast somehow sure so, yeah dory i thank you very much for having you here Awesome. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Yeah, it's quite cool. So it's fun. it's really cool to that that it works actually this chat between between um Ireland and Toronto. For me it's actually it's premiere it's the first time that I'm going to do that, you know. I mean, in my podcast we did it last week with with Dory's podcast, but uh cool, great. Thank you for for introducing me in this technology, Dory fantastic thank you for the opportunity and if you like what you hear we see us in the third part take care bye 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 care. bye bye